Look at the team batting average, 336, 27 runs scored, and they've been doing it all up and down their lineup for the Bruins trying to stay perfect on the season. Louisiana also comes in with terrific pedigree, Michelle. They actually uh, joined a pretty elite group just recently. Yeah, this is a program that has a ton of wins. But you know what I love about this weekend is that coach says, hey, we want to be able to host supers, regionals, and look at where they are at at all time. Over 1,800 wins. I mean, those are elite programs. This is a Louisiana program that has just a lot of pride. Of um, but one of the hardest Savannah. schedules here Hold in Clearwater. On. Two top 10 opponents yesterday, and they will go back to back with two more today. UCLA and then Florida State as Carly Heath steps in. And you've got to be ready right away against the Bruins. And Carly Heath throws with good velocity, mid to high 60s. She'll work in a screw drop curve and change. Not going to really see her go up in the zone with her rise ball. Her key is going to be to keep it at the knees or below. Make these Bruin hitters get some ground balls to her defense. Yesterday against Virginia Tech in the first inning, they sent 12 to the plate and scored six runs. Mm. And it was pretty much this lineup. Pola, Maya, Brady, and then the two freshmen at 3-4 and the transfer Palacios in the five spot. And look at the numbers for Woolery, 500 here in Clearwater. She and Grant have each driven in seven runs, so a big splash for the youngsters. Savvy Pola, the second baseman, 15 hits and 13 runs scored. She has taken over the top spot in the lineup. Four sixty nine on the season, the OPS over a thousand. UCLA this weekend has just had such a good game plan up at the plate. They've known what they're looking for. If a pitcher's gonna go more up in the zone, if she's gonna go more down in the zone, and they've been able to get their barrel to whatever the scouting report is on the pitcher. There's Kelly Inouye Perez, 17th season now as the head coach at UCLA. And the swing and miss from Pola, and a strikeout for Carly Heath. Well, you don't see that very often, Savvy Pola swinging through pitches, but this is a rise ball. It's just going to go up and out. So the, the, the bat from Carly Heath is very athletic. Is that good rise ball change up? Also the number two hitter in the lineup. That is her first strikeout of the season in 33 plate appearances for Savvy. So here's Maya Brady. Having an absolute blast to start the season with a 606 batting average, five home runs, 15 runs batted in. Her 20 hits through 11 games is the third most ever at UCLA behind Natasha Watley and Kylie Perez. And she's not been the one this weekend driving people in. It's been the freshman Megan Grant, Jordan Woolery behind her. She only has one RBI. It's from that home run that she hit, but she scored six runs here in Clearwater. So the hitters back behind her stepping up to produce runs. Power numbers already way ahead of her start from a season ago. Eight extra base hits on the year, including this monster blast. Really a no-doubter off of her bat. There's a 3-0 count. She for sure had the green light and took advantage of having the green light. Was on time, like a BP swing. She was just geared up, ready to go, looking for a strike in that count. Carly Heath already establishing that inside corner. So important to be able to throw into that 
inner half of the plate to be able to use the outer half. Senior from North Augusta, Georgia. She also will swing the bat today. She's number two in their lineup. Ground ball to second. Alexa Langleers has it two down. The next after the Bruins, third baseman, Megan Grant. It's good to get those first two outs. We saw UCLA last night explode in the first inning for six runs in the first against Virginia Tech. Here's Megan Grant, the freshman from San Bruno, California. It is a big roster for UCLA, 11 newcomers this year between the freshmen and the transfers. Fierce composition, uh, competition for starting jobs early in the season. That the Bruins hope will elevate everyone's play. It's the new norm around college athletics. You've got to find that blend of returners and a freshman class and then find spots for that transfer portal. Megan Grant just not scared to get on top of the plate, trying to take away that inside corner. Only has three hits, you guys, this weekend, but seven RBIs to show for it. So when she's gotten a swing, there's been with runners on and in big situations. She had a walk-off hit in their win against Nebraska. She had the game winner against Florida State the other night. So they've been clutch. Bruins with victories over Nebraska, Alabama, Florida State, and Virginia Tech. And a couple of wins here for ace Megan Faramo over ranked opponents. And a strikeout for Heath, so that's two. And a one, two, three start for Carly. Carly Heath, the senior, using that rise ball effectively. A couple of strikeouts in the inning on the outside corner. That rise is a hopping. Oh, another beautiful day. Here along the uh, Gulf of Mexico, final day of the Tax Act Clearwater Elite Invitational presented by Evo Shield. And we will get our first look at the freshman and the number one pitcher in this year's class, Taylor Tinsley. One and oh on the season, six and a third innings of work, one and a third here so far this weekend. Coach Inouye Perez says that she is our future and when she is on, she can be unhittable with that rise ball. She's going to be in the upper 60s. She is There's working on a drop right of Lisa Fernandez. Uh, but it's that rise ball that can just be explosive at the top of the zone. Good change up. And so trying to get her some innings and get her settled into this uh, pitching rotation. Stormy Kotzelnik will lead things off the first baseman. 455 with a home run and four runs batted in so far in the tournament. Heath will hit second. Jordan Campbell is also one to watch in that three spot. Stormy's also got a triple. You know, both of these teams are really young. A lot of freshmen and sophomores. Only one senior between both teams' starting lineups is starting in this game. It's Carly Heath, the starting pitcher for Louisiana, and we'll hit in the two spot. Raging Cajuns trying to end a three-game skid. They opened up the tournament with a win over Indiana, but then lost to Michigan, a one-run game, lost to Oklahoma State in five innings, and then another one-run loss to Arkansas. If you're a softball fan, you need to put it on your list. Get a trip down to Louisiana. 
the rabid raging Cajun fans, some of the best in the game. And just a wonderful atmosphere down there. Yeah, I called a regional there several years ago now, and it was just electric. Center Field like, Club was bumping. It was <laughs> really hot, first of all. Great food, <laughs> but it was just jam-packed. They had one of the best yeah. home field advantages. Yep. Stadium, and, and again, like we talked about in the open, the, the program, the history. Goes the opposite way, and it's off the glove of Powell out and left. Stormy gonna try for second, and slides in safely in the back of the bag. You could tell that Storm was looking to hit within this hit bat and understand that she's going to get the outside corner to smash this ball to left field. Kennedy Powell misplayed that a bit. This is a ball that should be caught, but it's just a line drive, almost a drop, a line drive drop ball out to her in left field and good hustle by Stormy out of the box. She sees that Kennedy Powell mishandled that ball and is thinking two all the way, slid the backside of the bag to avoid the tag. A double will lead off this inning for Stormy. Immediately a runner in scoring position for the pitcher, Carly Heath. First pitch swinging. Powell appears to be fighting the sun a little bit, makes the catch. One down. Been tested early. Oh, ball went a lot further than mm -hmm. I thought that it was going to. How about you guys? Just kept going. Yeah, it kept going, and Powell fighting the sun. And not a lot of wind today, but you could see the way it was. she was drifting toward the line. Good job of tracking that ball down. Good footwork, has to drop step and cross back over. <laughs> <laughs> that would be artificial wind. <laughs> yeah. There's Jordan Campbell. Junior out Kingwood, Texas, their top returning hitter from a year ago. They won their third consecutive Sun Belt Tournament Championship, lost in the regionals to Clemson last season. But they have dominated the Sun Belt for a long time. I always feel like they're one of those programs that you don't want to go to their house during regionals, and you don't want to see them come to your house <laughs> for regionals. Six times to the Women's College World Series over the years, from Yvette Girard to Michael Lotif. Now Jerry Glasgow in his sixth season. Over 200 wins for Jerry. 2-2 Two -two to Campbell. Punchers are out. Two down. She brushed her back with an inside pitch coming in hard at her hands and then brought in this curve ball, that inside pitch that was a blatant ball, which is able to set up this curve ball. Brushed her off the plate, paints the outside corner, looking strike out for Tinsley. So after the Kotzelnik double, a couple of outs for UCLA, and can Tinsley get out of it here facing Sophie Piskas? Junior from Paris, Tennessee. One hit so far in the tournament, drove in a run in their Michigan game. Played umpire Don Brown says that hit her in the arm, not the bat. So a couple on with two outs. Baseman, 
Oh. Yeah. And she took that like a champ so much that I thought it hit off the knob of her bat because she didn't flinch. Her elbow. Here's Alexa Langliers. <laughs> Trying to push one across early for Louisiana. Thirteen home runs a year ago. Gives them some power from the right side. Right now, what Tinsley can throw for a strike to these right-handed hitters at the curveball and then throwing that off-speed pitch well. Really, anything inside has been well off the plate and up in the zone. Not good control right now of the inner half to righties. Plate Marty Abazition at first, Shane Jackson at third, our umpires today. Taylor, you can see the way that when she gets on the pitching rubber, she kind of gets into that squat and then looks for her sign. I'd like to see her be a little more relaxed, look for her sign, and then get ready to go. You know, just, she looks a little tense. It's part of that freshman, right? Working mm -hmm. through all that, mm -hmm. finding that rhythm. But the routine, right? That yes. is so important to Absolutely. you pitcher people. <laughs> <laughs> Popped her up. Tinsley will give way. And the catch is made by Woolery. Side retired, a couple left on. Scoreless through one. Tax Act Clearwater Invitational, presented by Evo Shield, is brought to you by Tax Act. File for less and get more. St. Pete Clearwater, Florida. Let's shine. Plan your escape at visitstpeteclearwater.com. Evo Shield, the source for custom fitting protective gear, and Gatorade, and our commitment to fuel tomorrow. Get ready, you're going to see plenty of dolphins, uh, dogs, and kids playing in the sand today here at the Tax Act Clearwater Invitation presented by Evo Shield. Scoreless through one, four, five, and six due up for UCLA here in the second. Here's Jordan Woolery hitting 500 in the tournament with a grand slam for the freshman from Walnut Creek. Part of this class that has placed three rookies in the starting lineup. Uh, on occasion, and uh, three of them out there with Grant Woolery and Powell today. quite a shot because it came off the All-American Montana Fouts. Pitch up in the zone. It was actually an 0-2 count. She just whacked that out of the yard. Going the opposite field. Uh, not a bad, like, hello, softball. <laughs> <laughs> softball world, here I am. <laughs> that ended up being a big difference, too, in a two-run mm -hmm. win over Alabama. I just, I find it impressive when you look at the, the strength of this UCLA team, but just the depth of it, how many amazing athletes are in that dugout and the fact that they're starting the four freshmen mm -hmm. today, including obviously Tinsley in the circle. Good start for Carly Heath. That is her third strikeout of the first four she's faced. Okay, so we love the way that Carly Heath is spinning the ball up in the zone. And when we talked to Jerry Glasgow last <laughs> week, he said no rise ball for Carly Heath. And that is the rise ball that has had all three of her strikeouts in this game. I mean, it's working. 
Definitely. Next up is Charlize Palacios. For, for these coaches who the expectation is to make a deep run in the NCAA tournament, you want to test your team with a tough schedule. Mm -hmm. But the other thing to remember, it's important that you do win a few of those for your resume. Close doesn't count. It may help your RPI, but when you're sitting in that selection committee talking about, well, who'd you beat? Yeah. Yeah. Still significant. And that's why this is a, this is a big one today for Louisiana with UCLA and then Florida State. They, of course, uh, you know, will be playing LSU. They've got Texas coming up in March, team that was in the championship series in Oklahoma City last year. He's really liked his two past recruiting classes, compares yep. them to SEC talent level that he's brought into Louisiana last year and this year. to think too like the first time that you come to Clearwater kind of feels the same for these teams as the first time you're playing at the Women's College World Series and I, yes I know it is different in terms of February and May slash June and expectations and everything but we see first time teams here be tight they, they play tight nervous struggle a little bit it's a big environment yeah. TV cameras everywhere yeah. fans hostile environment at some point mm -hmm. and the tough competition, I mean, everything that you feel in a way here is the same type of things that you feel at the Women's College World Series, although there's slightly more on the line in Oklahoma City, but it's a good test for these teams early in the season to be here. 3-2 pitch here from Heath to Charlize Palacios. As the Bruins look for their first base runner of the day. Heath has been so strong on that inside corner, really establishing it and then expanding the zone. Another 3 2. Fights another one off. Her fifth foul ball of the at bat. There's Lisa Fernandez over there in the first base coach's box. Palacios gets a hold of one, hammers it deep. A nine pitch at bat and Palacios finally gets a rise ball that she can elevate. She gets underneath of this and you can see it's up at her letters and she just angles it out. One more getting on top of those rise balls. It's getting under them and bashing them out of the yard and that goes a long, long way. An wow. absolute moonshot. <laughs> Man. Third home run of the season for Charlize. Here's freshman Kennedy Powell.
So their first base runner ends up touching all the bases. And Powell from Conroe, Texas. Has a hit in two of their four games here with an RBI in the Alabama game. Sliced foul down the left field line. Let's revisit that home run from Palacios. And a pitch out over the plate, Ooh. and Carly Heath knew it. That, I can't believe it hit the top of the <laughs> this telephone pole, light pole, whatever. Look at it. Ooh, right there at the top. Man, that was just blasted. Nine pitch at bat. That should be worth two Jolly Ranchers from <laughs> Kirk Walker, the third base coach. <laughs> this, uh, this ballpark has been very home run friendly. And Clearwater in general, 79 home runs. It was a big Friday. Look at that. 41 home runs on oh, Friday. Wow. Yikes. And uh, Sunday's four home runs. What, we're, we only have uh, two games going on right now? Three <laughs> games? <laughs> yeah, we've only been playing for an hour and a half. <laughs> like, the other field started at 9. Duke Michigan. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. It's been a little breezy, but I think it's more than the breeze. Yeah, <laughs> I think the so ball. too. <laughs> Might be the weight room. Yes. Uh, Grab line leaders, the backhand at second base. Steals a base hit, two down. I, I love the determination to make this play by Langliers. They just gave up a home run, and instead of letting UCLA grab more momentum, Louisiana, by way of Langliers and this diving play up the middle, brings it back to Louisiana within this inning. And I love that motion. What a play by Alexa Langliers to keep Powell off the bases. Here's Alyssa Garcia, the starting catcher today. And great positioning on that play, too, because Langliers was well up the line, knowing that anything up the middle she was going to have to go, go get. But respecting the speed of Powell, who was you know, showing slap, she had started her at bat hitting away and then showed slap. So really good defense behind Heath for Louisiana. Pitch. Oh, you're right, Michelle. The positioning so important now against uh, the more powerful Garcia. Langliers is playing on the back of the infield dirt. They all have the wristbands too, so all the defenders know what pitch is coming to help with their positioning. They know the scouting report on the batters to help with their positioning. Anything to help with anticipation. Anticipating the ball coming to you, understanding where the pitch is going at the plate. And you see they all look down, not just the pitcher. Here's the one-two. Lifted out to shallow right, and coming on to make the catch is Campbell. Side retired, but a home run for Charlize Palacios that goes a long, long way. Palacios gets UCLA on the board first early in this game. A nine and pitch at bat had us surprised how high that hit up the light pole. That was a bomb. Well, it's been a terrific weekend here in Clearwater. Not done yet, but some of the highlights. UCLA is unbeaten. Oklahoma State is absolutely crushing. They went 5-0, led by Kelly Naomi over the weekend. And if you want drama, that name is Kristen White. A walk-off followed by a web gem for the Alabama freshman. Hugs all around. 
The ESPN softball season is underway on the road to the Women's College World Series. one nothing UCLA. Charlize Palacios, a solo home run. 6-7-8 coming up for the Raging Cajuns. Here's Vic Valdez, 4.55 on the season for the freshman from Alvin, Texas. Jamder pops it up. Savvy pull on the grass, one down. The leadoff double for Kotzelnik. And since then, Taylor Tinsley has settled in. The freshman righty out of Lawrenceville, Georgia. And now we'll face Sissy Vasquez. Another newcomer from New Waverly, Texas. Four on the season. Oh, two. Well, all the accolades for Taylor Tinsley as uh, the top pitcher in this year's class. All she did when she arrived on campus was throw a no hitter in her debut. Last freshman to do that was Amanda Freed back in 1999. This one really got in on Sissy. She's not scared to go up and in to uh -huh. these right handed hitters and hard up and in. Oh, it's such a good setup for that curveball that she'll run away. Change up. Gonna throw it here, you think? Curveball? I would. <laughs> <laughs> Called strike three. Well, that was actually her drop ball, but it was the corner that we were talking about. So you come tight and in, and then you go. So you get, you get a little chin music there, and then you go to that outside corner, and that's got a little drop, little curve to it. Really working on that corner. It's one of the things that Kelly, in a way, Perez mentioned that she's working with Lisa Fernandez to really get that down ball going. Both of her strikeouts have been looking today. Here's Maddie Hayden. Laces that one out in a diving grab for Kennedy Powell. One, two, three inning. And the web jam for the Bruins. Kennedy Powell, the freshman out in left field, getting a great jump on this ball as it's slicing away from her, goes down and gets the diving catch for the Bruins to start picking up the bats to do some damage again. the Sunday night showcase here in Clearwater, Florida State and Alabama, 5 Eastern on ESPN. Fingers crossed all around town that it might be Kat Sandercock against Montana Fouts this evening. <laughs> Can we get the All-Americans in the Sunday night showdown? We get to write the lineups tonight, right? Shouting that's out, a, part of that's a shout out to Coach Murph <laughs> and Coach Alameda. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a fun one. Ooh, ooh, ooh. 8-9-1 here for UCLA. Lauren Carter getting the start out in right field this afternoon, this morning. games for Carter. She's two for two at the plate. And has scored five times. She's been effective at getting on base. 
Here is our schedule update brought to you by Evo Shield. So get your ESPN Plus activated. And then tonight, prime time on ESPN and ESPN2. FSU Alabama, Mississippi State, UCF. We got 10 ranked teams in our field of 16 this weekend. Big weekend for UCLA and Oklahoma State thus far, the unbeatens. You know, we're looking over the schedule too. I mean, even just walking out of here with three wins is really good for your program because yeah. the competition's just been so tough. Been some really good games. Ball's been flying out of here. Well, and that's why the fans like to come. That's why the teams like to come for the challenge. And our changes afoot here for the Raging Cajuns. Well, we've been talking about all the uh, games going on this weekend, and uh, they run simultaneously. As we check in on uh, assistant coach Jen Brundage and Michigan, they are trailing Duke 6-3 to three in the top of the sixth. So the Blue Devils trying to make a statement for what should be a very strong Atlantic Coast Conference this year. And for Michigan, with their new head coach, Bonnie Thole, can they get back on top of the Big Ten before UCLA comes to town in a couple of years? Of course, all part of the moves coming in college athletics. And after the walk to Lauren Carter, we've got a pitching change for Louisiana. Back in a moment. So Kendra Lamb, the senior from Australia, will come on here with a uh, base runner, nobody out, top three, and a one nothing game. Didn't notice anything specific uh, on why the pitching change, but Carly Heath will stay in the batting order, and technically the way they set their lineup up, she could even come back in and pitch. But here's the scout on Kendra. Kendra comes over from Australia. Actually, she's going to be up, down, and change, throwing the mid to upper 60s. Hard up. Maybe just to give a different look with the top of the lineup for UCLA on deck. Number nine hitter, Janelle Mionio, the transfer from Arizona. Carter, safe at second. Ooh, and the stolen base looked like the throw had her beat. Must have been a good slide back of the bag. Carter does get a good jump. The throw coming down. Mm. Nice slide to the back of the bag. Really trying to get that extra time. That making her body as small as possible, as far away as possible when that tag comes in. Mm -hmm. Fingertips. Yeah. So a runner in scoring position for Mionyo, who a couple of years ago was the Pac-12 batting champ with a 439 average. That's a good pitch right there. Ooh. Oh, that missed. Out of Hacienda Heights, California. Back closer to home. And as you would uh, expect, a lot of these Californians very familiar with each other and friendly from their travel ball days. She knew quite a few of the UCLA players. Both the Bruins and the Wildcats were at the World Series a year ago. Dropping down the bunt is Mionyo. Valdez makes the play. Carter to third with one out. And the sacrifice gets the top of the order up with a runner 60 feet away. Good execution by Mionyo, who's so good with her short game. Savvy Pola struck out on a rise ball her first time up against the starter, Carly Heath. So her first look at Lamb.
Infield is in, so is uh, the outfield pretty much. Pop on the outside corner, though. Good hold. Savvy. Savvy on the season. Four for eight with a runner in scoring position. Good for six RBI this year. Three and oh. I can tell she's just trying to find that outside corner to these lefties, and she'll face now three lefties in a row and just face Mionio. Good patience by UCLA with a couple of these pitches to work the count. You do not want to put another runner on with Maya Brady coming up. Pola pops it up. Good pitch from Lamb. Two down. Wow, on a 3-0 count, that you got to make sure you're going to strike that well. In that situation, I'm, I'm probably uh, not green lighting. Yeah. Going to take a look at a strike first. Yep. Brady grounded out her first time up. Look like maybe that's exactly what Kelly was pondering right there. Well, it feels so much better to face Brady with two outs and a runner at third versus facing Brady with two on and less than two outs. It's a totally different game. Or the run was already pushed across with less than two outs. She is batting 500 with a runner in scoring position on the season. California was already the national player of the week last week putting up numbers to consider again this week although Kyla Naomi may have locked that down with a huge weekend here for Oklahoma State a lot of impressive numbers that's for sure Bite on that outside pitch over and over and over again on repeat. Outside, it's like a rise ball on different levels. Slightly moving away from these left-handed hitters, too. Two-two pitch. Got her! Went upstairs to end the threat. Kendra Lamb, the Aussie coming in for the Raging Cajuns, throwing that rise ball at the top of the zone, gets Brady to swing through it, getting out of the jam with that runner on third. How about today's performance update prepared by Tax Act? Get you caught up on Nebraska, Arkansas. That's Brooke Andrews going yard. Got Nebraska on top, but then Kylie Halverson came right back high on the Hogs as they have taken the 4-1 lead over the Huskers. SEC Big Ten showdown. We've got UCLA and Louisiana here. Charlize Palacios, solo home run, the difference. Nine and in the top, due up for Louisiana against freshman Taylor Tinsley. Yeah. 
you're hearing some riled up fans because yeah. Louisiana, uh, their pitcher Lamb did not get that call and intensely throws in the same spot or what it looks like is the same spot and gets the call right away. Well, it's early in the season for the fans, the coaches, the players, yeah, and, and the umpires. Everybody. Yeah. Yeah. everybody getting back in the swing of things, pun intended. I just like to hear the, the fans chirping just a little bit. Just a little, not too just much. Not a lot. I mean, not there a lot. Are just some a little. Out there that are just. No. Are you really going to argue every pitch call? Come on now. Yes, when you're at their home field, they it do down. really Let's hard to do a down. lot of pitches. Yes. <laughs> and you know who you are. <laughs> One, two. To Kayla Falterman. First at bat of the day. Out of the Woodlands, Texas. And a quick chat with Jerry Glasgow. Not a whole lot to scout either, you know, when you've got a freshman pitcher who's only thrown, what, six innings previous. Obviously, you've probably seen her out on the summer ball circuit, but that's a lot of work for these coaches, these pitching mm -hmm. coaches, the hitting coaches to get ready for five games in four days. Cool. Yeah. So much prep. And they're definitely not going to the beach on the weekend. Are here. you sure? No, I, I, they actually are because I ran into Taryn Mowat <laughs> on the beach. <laughs> just briefly, just briefly. Arizona pitching coach, but try to make the, the most of, of both, right? Going back to that screwball, Michelle. Getting there to chase a little bit off the plate. Good spot for that pitch, right at the knees, tailing away. Strikeout number three. Stormy Kotzelnik. Doubled to lead things off for the Raging Cajuns back in the first. I always find it interesting to talk about freshman pitchers not knowing. I and mean, you know, they, they can change a lot of stuff in the fall with good pitching yep. coaches, but freshman hitters as well, trying to figure out that hole in their swing. If you haven't really had a lot of tape on them. And we've seen some freshmen do some, some damage here in this tournament. Well, and one of the coaches, and I can't remember because we had 16 calls the past two weeks preparing for these <laughs> games, but one of the coaches was talking about the difference in strike zone, too, from travel ball mm -hmm. uh, moving up to the college game. So just adjusting to not only a whole new way of life, but a uh, slightly different strike zone. Speed of the game, all those transitions, especially for freshmen, everything's new. Classes, yes. everything they go through is a new experience, and so it's a lot of stress. Why do I sense you took great pleasure in finding holes in freshman swings? <laughs> <laughs> Smitty gets a little cantankerous when those rookies come up early in the season. <laughs> what do you look for when a freshman comes up? Feet, hands, positioning, how do you find that hole? Uh, so feet, a lot of it, where they're stepping, and, and then their hands, mm -hmm. if their hands are casting, you know, getting away from their body, so you're gonna, they're gonna be weak underneath their hands. That'll stay fair inside the line, scooped up by Woolery, two down. You know, and then of course, timing. You know, if you can catch them and push them out on that front foot, then you know that they're they're not going to be able to keep their weight back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was going to say, Michelle, I feel like you can tell so much with how a hitter takes a pitch. And I think that's why we noticed the really good takes up here, too, because a hitter's not being fooled or looking for something else. A hitter's take, how they take a pitch, says a lot about what they're looking for and what they're timed up with. Going to be talking with Jerry Glasgow. Next inning. Here from Kelly I a little later. And right back to Tinsley. One, two, three inning back to back for the youngster. A one nothing UCLA lead with the home run swinger coming up for the Bruins. Swinging the lumber and hitting the lumber. Welcome back to the
the 2023 Tax Act Clearwater Invitational presented by Evo Shield. Some of the fans enjoying uh, some of the sights and sounds here in Clearwater. 1-0 UCLA over Louisiana, and we're joined now by Jerry Glasgow. Coach, you guys came into this game 1-3 here in Clearwater. What was your pregame message to the team? You know, as I talked to the kids about, you know, my journey through softball, and I went to Crab Orchard High School, 100, you know, kids in the high school, 24 kids in my <laughs> class, nine boys, and and at that time, UCLA basketball, it was a big thing, you know, Bill Walton and Lou Alcindor, Jamal Wilkson, and of course, Coach Walton, and, and uh, you know, we, we grew up reading John Wooden's books, and so I talked to him about, you know, at A&M in 2014 or 2015, we go there on Saturday and we get beat 13 to nothing, but I'm so excited about being on a campus at UCLA and I'm putting pictures on Facebook and <laughs> sending all my buddies at Crab Orchard, you know, I'm coaching against UCLA. I didn't care that I got beat 13 to nothing. We won 7-6 on day two, and that's a journey we got to do as a team. Like, we got to learn to, you got to be excited to compete against UCLA on Sunday here at Clearwater. You got to be excited to be in this environment, and, and it's an honor and a privilege to be here. And, you know, I, people, I'm tired of people walking up here on the thing, are you okay, coach? Hey, I've been beat a lot of times in my journey because if you're going to win a lot you're going to get beat a lot and so that has got to get that to infect them that like it's not about winning and losing it's about competing yeah. and learning to compete at the highest levels we're having fun today i think thank you so much Jerry. Thanks, coach appreciate thank you guys it. for all you're doing great story <laughs> he it. needs Love his it. own podcast if he doesn't have it already <laughs> louisiana take care of that <laughs> that's awesome it is about competing you know especially early in the season and i think a lot of these coaches are teaching those Freshman, you know, you're going to stub your toe a little bit. You're going to strike yeah. out. You're going to give up home runs, but you got to come back and continue to compete. Of course, UCLA, not only good at basketball with Coach Wooden, but in softball with the 12 NCAA championships, Sharon Backus, Sue Enquist, and now Kelly I. And a special shout out to one of the great coaches in, in UCLA history who we lost in the fall, Billy Moore, the very first United States Olympic coach who won a national championship in basketball and was a huge fan of UCLA softball and just a great ambassador of the university. <laughs> Mentor to Pat Summit. So just like Coach Wooden touched a lot of lives on the softball team, the connection to the basketball on the women's side strong as well. Grant Woolery and Palacios, so the home run hitter do up third. The home run hitter today, I should say. Grant and Woolery also home run hitters. <laughs> so you got two freshmen and a transfer right in the heart of your order, and then a third freshman right behind that. You know, there is definitely like an allure playing UCLA. I remember playing them for the first time and just being like, wow, I, like, I'm on the same field playing against this, all these pretty colors. You know, they have the best colors. The name on the, the front of that uniform that, yeah, it might be worth a couple of runs. It, yeah. Yeah. For real though, like that, that is a real thing that takes getting used to and playing at this level. And honestly, you guys, even if you play the same players in travel ball, it still just feels different because of what you just said, Beth, that, that uniform, that name. And the depth of it, too. It's, uh, you may have played one or two players, but then <laughs> you stack it <laughs> with yeah. a, a lineup one through nine and then a, the depth of what's in the dugout. And it's impressive. Yeah, it's impressive, and it can be intimidating. Yes. Oh, yeah. You look at that lineup card in the dugout, and you're looking for a spot where you can catch your breath, and you're like, uh, uh, nope. Uh -oh. <laughs> yeah. Pick your poison. I don't see one. Here's Woolery, struck out her first time up. The resume is the best in the game. Now in their 48th season, it started with an AIAW championship. That was before the NCAA took over in 1978. 12 championships for the Bruins. They have been to the World Series 31 of 40 years and have played in the championship Half of those 40 seasons. Remarkable. Really so a is. walk and now a hit batter. Kendra Lamb having a hard time finding the, the zone. 
Oh. Ouch. You guys, that's going to leave a mark. In the sprint. <laughs> oh, man. Shaking it off. That is going to leave a big bruise. Big bruise. All right, wood on me, for sure. I know that. <laughs> Seems you might even find it the <laughs> seam in the <laughs> middle of the bruise. We're having a good time with her in the UCLA <laughs> dugout. Just to be on the safe side, Willery can re-enter, but they'll get a pinch runner out there for her. Lauren Hatch. Looks like the Raging Cajuns are going to make a little change. This will be their second pitching change in the first four innings. Back to Clearwater in a moment. We are back in Clearwater, and things are getting interesting because the freshman, Chloe Riaceto comes on. She has thrown just one and a third inning all season. And she is the third different pitcher, and she comes into the ball game with two on base and the home run hitting Charlize Palacio at the plate. I think in this situation, you come in, you gotta be thinking, roll a ground ball, try to get mm -hmm. the defense to try to turn a double play, especially with the righty up. But just keep it in the yard. Just made her season debut last night, came on in relief. And yeah. this is what Palacios did the first time up. <laughs> she got all of it, you guys. How many feet do we think that that one? Would have traveled well, the deepest part of the field at 220. <laughs> it was another 20 feet up the pole. So according to my physics, that would yeah. be 250 foot shot. It was a Nuvman-esque <laughs> 250. Yeah. yeah. An alo like Yeah. There's the pole that almost took the power out <laughs> when she hit it. Slow roller on the ground. Oh, could be two. Oh, Riaceto gets the double play. Well, that's the that's what you hope for. You come into that situation, you have your defense playing back. You throw a pitch that's going to get underneath the hands. It looks like it's foul almost, and then it comes back. Good job by Valdez to step on the bag at third and then gun it across the infield to pick up that big double play. That's, that's a huge help for that freshman coming in the circle in a pressure situation. Still a runner in scoring position here for Kennedy Powell. Had the home run in the second. They left a runner at third base in the third, and now another runner out there here in the fourth. And look at how far foul this is. So there's so much spin. It's way wow. over here. And then it comes back in. <laughs> <laughs> that, that could not have been placed any better oh, man. from the Raging Cajun wow. perspective. No doubt, no doubt. Then step on the base and throw to first. And if you're Palacios, Valdez. you're probably feeling like, uh, try and hit it like that again. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> she probably couldn't. Such a she hit the first one 250, <laughs> she hit the second one 2.5. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Craziness. Can't give up on the, can't give up on it, that's for sure. Back up the middle, and this could score a run. And it will. Hatch motors around, 2 nothing. RBI single for the freshman, Kennedy Powell. Another freshman step up for this UCLA team. This time with two outs, Kennedy Powell not trying to do too much. Just drives that outside pitch right back up the middle of the field, uses the ground to create that big hop. The infield was playing in a bit, respecting her speed. It's a big run in this game. It's been tight. Boy, the three freshman hitters now here in Clearwater, 12 hits and 17 combined runs batted in. <sighs> so much for easing into it. <laughs> well, now we know why they're <laughs> hitting. I guess now we know why they're all top 10 recruits. <laughs> yeah, hitting three and four in the lineup and, and six.
Garcia flew out in the second. It is kind of fun sometimes, too, when you see freshmen come in. They don't know any better. They just mm -hmm. take big swings, and nothing's polluting, you know, the mindset. That's Sam Landry out in the bullpen. Grounder to second, jumps up at Langleyers. Oh, and it's dropped at first, and the runner is safe. And the Bruins have him on the corners. Should have been out of the inning. Langleyers does a good job of staying through this with a little bit of traffic in front of her, but the ball just pops out of the glove. Looks like she stretched a little bit too early. The throw was high. It's interesting how the timing you know, off on that just a little bit, a little bit of a bobble. So then the throw gets rushed a little bit. It's high, and at first you're feeling like, oh, okay, wait, it's going to be close. So you reach out and so right. One thing leads to another, another, right? Absolutely. It's like that snowball effect. Yeah. So true. So in the inning, a walk, a hit batter, and now the E3. And they have uh, opened the door for UCLA with an extra chance. The hit batter has already come in to score Hatch on the RBI single from Powell. We'll talk to Kelly I coming up in a moment. Here's Lauren Carter, walked in the third. Screwball in the outside corner. It's got a little up, a little out. She can get that pitch a little bit closer through the zone. A nice little pitch for the righties. Called strike three on the inside corner. Couple stranded for the Bruins, but they do get one more in. Maria Zetto comes in and is able to roll some ground balls and then get this strikeout. Louisiana still in it, just down by two. Welcome back to the 2023 Tax Act Clearwater Invitational presented Bring by it. Evo Shield. Two nothing, Bruins with the lead over Louisiana and we have Kelly I on the mic. And coach, your freshman class has just been outstanding. What, what makes them so great? Um, you know, first of all, they, they're enjoying this. They really love to be able to be in these big moments. They've been waiting to be able to be in the uniform and, and come to this tournament and play in these big games. So I think that part you could see it. They're enjoying it, they're having fun and that always leads to uh, your ability to play your best game. Coach, how do you feel like you guys have played this weekend overall, looking back? You know, it's, it's we're excited. You know, I think we're able to build momentum. You know, I think the runs are, are, are hard to come by, but the quality at, bat, at bats are cascading through our lineup. I mean, it is just one of those things that as a coach, you're really proud to be able to have those opportunities for them to string things together. And KP just came up with a big one. The secret word was cascade <laughs> and coach <laughs> got it in. Nice awesome. job. <laughs> They're keeping it loose. I gotta, I'm, I'm right there with them. But um, I just appreciate it. I love what Taylor Tinsley's doing right now yeah, as yeah. a freshman. And I think with that, we got to have her back and put more runs on the board. Thank you very All much, right. Thank Kelly. You. <laughs> Thanks, Coach. Yeah, the celebration. Awesome. She got the secret word. <laughs> well, let's talk about Taylor Tinsley because uh, after the leadoff double to Stormy Kotelnik in the first, you know, she's been taking care of business back to back, one, two, three innings. She's retired seven in a row. 
She's used a really good screwball, curveball. Yeah. Uh, you know, that combination of expanding the zone east and west. She's got a change up. And, and you know, Coach I talked with us before the tournament and said she is our future. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try to get her ready. Threw her earlier against Florida State. She got roughed up, pulled her out. And I think that's part of it, too, is the mentality. You don't want to keep your freshman out there too long when they're in the circle. Kind of give them that confidence. Give them the big starts. But if they get in trouble, help them out. Jordan Campbell, 3-4-5 coming up. Well, you think about their history. I mean, the, the list of pitches is legendary. And, and they've always had the ability, you know, to have an upperclassman that can pass the knowledge on to the youngsters. You certainly, you know, Kelly I was Lisa's catcher, so you've got one of the best batteries in the history of the game. And the information that a freshman yes, can Kate. soak up, like Taylor Tinsley. And one down. One thing that I noticed too, with her wind up and her delivery, it's a little bit deceptive. There's some movement with her, her long limbs and her glove, and it feels There's like the ball hitter. gets on these hitters just so quickly. It, like it throws a heavy ball, but mm -hmm. it's her wind up and this kind of jerky movement at the beginning that just boom, then the ball gets on top of you. It's very interesting to watch and see how that affects the hitters. First pitch swinging, backhanded by Grant, and the throw over the first to get Piscas two down. These freshmen are just all over the field, up at the plate. They're having big at bats, quality at bats, and then this play right here at the hot corner, go, going to the backhand toward the line, sets her feet to make a nice, solid throw. What an arm that she has, too, to throw it all across the diamond. Under control, freshman to freshman play right there, Grant Woolery. Alexa Langliers. throw on that inside corner too. His backdoor curveball yeah. backing Louisiana off the plate and then that last pitch rise ball coming back underneath and up. So when you can throw on that inside corner on multiple planes, it really opens up the outside part of the plate. You can see how far back off the plate Langley is. And it opens up the outside yeah, corner. Yeah. I mean, she's just been doing the same thing to them over and over again, using that rise ball, using that inside corner, to then open up the outside corner with her curve. And she has that effective changeup, too, that we've seen her throw at, at good times. And the walk. That ends a run of nine in a row that Tinsley had retired. First base runner since the first inning now for Louisiana. The CCLA team is going to learn so much about their freshmen and about their team from this weekend and then moving in next week into Palm Springs where they play six tough games too, including games against Florida and OU and Northwestern. Here's Vic Valdez popped up in the second. see it all too often anymore, Michelle, these pitchers that are not scared to go inside. I feel like more pitchers in our day and age right now are, are living more on the outside corner. But truly, she's a pitcher that will bust you hard and inside, and it's refreshing to watch, actually. Ground ball to second. Polo overthrows it. And runners on the corners for Louisiana. Should have been the third out of the inning. And now a chance 
the go-ahead run will come to the plate for the Raging Cajuns. Well, it looks like it's just going to be a routine ground ball out. Pull a plenty of time and just sails it. You can just see the way it comes out. She palms it, leads with that heel instead of snapping the fingers down, and it gets all the way to the fence. Lucky it didn't go in the dugout. That would have been two bases. Mm -hmm. That throw from a second baseman to a first baseman can be tricky sometimes because you don't want to throw it too hard, and she had a lot of time to think about it, and you take your time like that. Oftentimes, thoughts start to creep inside your head. You think too much. We've seen plenty of major leaguers get yippy throwing from second. Pinch hitter is going to be coming up for Louisiana. Laney Crater. Two for five on the season. She'll hit for Sissy Vasquez. Has a home run with three runs batted in. Had a chance to score in that uh, first inning. They went 0 for 3 with a runner in scoring position. Today's running for the Raven Cajuns, number 8, Taylor Roman. Taylor Roman will run over at first. The new batter for the Raven Cajuns, Lenny Crater. And that is Megan Faremo out to the bullpen. We've seen her start and come on in relief here in Clearwater. It's also Anna Vines who might be a, a defensive replacement. See her often at second base. Getting loose. I think they uh, might be getting Palacios in to catch here as well. They're still trying to figure some things out with the official score. Charlize is in the lineup as the DP. So Palacios will come on and Vines will come on after the Pola error at second base. Looks like Anna will step in there. stay in the lineup as the DP. So a change at second and a change behind the plate. So we've, we've seen UCLA make all kinds of changes. We've talked about the depth. We've talked about the versatility. Interesting, though, to change catchers in mid-inning. And then uh, Vines, the second baseman, comes on as well. And Anna would take Alyssa Garcia's place as the number seven hitter. Ground ball to short, and it gobbles up Brady, and a run scores, and the tying run will head to third. Second error of the inning for UCLA. This 
ball hit hard right at Brady, but she backs up and you can just see it goes off the heel of her glove. And so this is a play that she probably could have gone and gotten it mid-bounce. A little bit of a backup off the heel of the glove. And, and, you know, sometimes, again, it's that momentum shift. And you start feeling like a couple of defensive changes, that the pressure gets on, and another miscue. And UCLA appears ready to make another change. And will this be the pitching change? Louisiana scores one, and the tying run 60 feet away. The go-ahead is now on base as well. And Megan Faremo will come on. After back-to-back -back errors for the Bruin defense has made things interesting here. Faremo with that experience. We saw this yesterday as well against Florida State. Tinsley got the start, got a little bit of trouble. Faremo came in to really shut down. Florida State or attempt to. And she's been throwing really well. 26 strikeouts and only two walks. Going to see her change speed so far this weekend with her changeup and an off-speed drop. That pitch has been so good toward the bottom of the zone. We're used to seeing her expand the zone with her rise ball, which she still can. But Michelle, the way that she's been able to throw off hitters' rhythm and timing has been impressive this weekend. Good velocity, good spin. Be in that upper 60, touching 70 miles an hour. So it's the speed, the spin that really makes the curve and the drop run through the zone and go down. But it's that change up, Amanda, that you were saying that really sets up everything else. She's been throwing that pitch with a lot of confidence. And, you know, the fact that UCLA is only two runs on the board kind of puts them in this position and not allow them. And seems like to let the freshmen just stay out there and figure it out and continue to work through this. Instead, they bring in the All-American wanting this win because they've only scored two runs. Came on last night in relief against Virginia Tech in the sixth inning and struck out five of the six she faced. And so here she comes on in a jam in the bottom of the fourth for the two-time All-American. She'll face the number eight hitter, Maddie Hayden. After two outs to start out the inning, a walk and a couple of errors. Roman is at third, Crater is at first. And that is a pinch runner over there as well. Vasquez re-entered. Swing and a miss. Maddie Hayden, a first and third situation. And then Brady able to run the runner back to first. Remember, they have been solid for the last five years, I think, with a Perez at short. So mm -hmm. shortstop is a new <laughs> adventure early in the season for UCLA and Kelly I trying to figure out what the best fit is going to be for the middle infield. There's a shot, center field, back it goes, over the head of Mionio, and the Raging Cajuns take the lead. Two-run double, Maddie Hayden off of Faremo. Sophomore Maddie Hayden just coming up in a big situation. Toes on the line and gets a pitch on the outside corner. She reaches for it. She goes for it and gets it over Mionio's head in center field. And with two outs, the Raging Cajuns running all the way. Two big runs up on the board to give them the lead here in the bottom of the fourth. Wow. Yeah, with UCLA opening the door with those couple of errors, it was huge for Louisiana to take advantage of those mistakes, scoring three runs in this inning. A quick two outs, too. Remember, it felt like it was forever ago that there was back-to-back -back ground ball to third base for the first two outs of this inning, and all of a sudden, Louisiana scores three. Yeah, it's the bottom of the order, too, getting it done. They've still got another runner out there at second base. It's the number nine spot in the order, which would be Kayla Falterman. Yeah. 
So Matty Hayden, who only had three RBI on the entire season, had two with that one swing. And to do it off of Faremo, yes. who had struck out 23 of the last 27 she had faced. This Louisiana team, they've been in some close games here, so they're used to the back and forth. One, one, one run loss to Michigan, one run loss to Arkansas. All right, this is Lauren Alred, freshman from Texarkana. Third at bat of the season for Lauren. She's gotten hits in her first two. Good frame by Palacios. Really good pitch. High with the rise, two and one. Runner goes, the throw down to third. Got her! But a big inning for Louisiana to take the lead. Yeah, with two outs, there was a walk, an air by the second baseman, an air by the shortstop, and then a sweet swing by Maddie Hayden, a two RBI double to put Louisiana on top. Today's Impact Players brought to you by Visit St. Pete Clearwater. UCLA jumping out to a 2-0 lead. Charlize Palacios, a solo home run. And then the RBI single for Kennedy Powell. And the lead has been erased by the Ragin' Cajuns. They strike back with a three-run fourth, buoyed by a couple of UCLA errors. And now how do the Bruins respond? Nine and then the top of the order. Janelle Mionio laid down a sacrifice her first time up. And one thing that you've noticed, there just have not been a lot of shutouts here this weekend. Even the teams that have done well, like Oklahoma State and UCLA with the best records this weekend still have given up quite a few runs, right? It's yeah. been hard to throw a shutout. Absolutely, it's a dogfight. <laughs> well, this will be intriguing here for UCLA because after Mionio will be the two players that committed the errors, Pola and Brady. Can they find redemption immediately with their bats? Mionio laying it down, safe at first. And Pola will have a base runner. Infield single for Janelle. Janelle just so good at reading the defense and seeing what they're giving her. Picking the right time to put this down. And Valdez charging that, but it's just textbook bunting the way she really kills that ball, allows it to to not move far off. All right, so the fourth pitcher of the day for Louisiana will be Sam Landry. Right here off the end of the bat is where she makes contacts and it just deadens this ball. That's why it just wasn't hit hard toward the third baseline. A perfect bump by Mayonio and it just starts off of where that ball made contact 
toward the end of her bat, right out in front of home plate. No way you're ever going to be able to get her. Serves as an additional leadoff hitter there at the bottom of the order for UCLA. So Sam Landry will come on. She was a 20-game winner for him last year. And Louisiana not afraid to use that entire pitching staff to try and get the W. Sam Landry is going to come in and throw a change-up, rise, curve, drop, throw a little bit of everything. Important for her to have her screwball. Jerry Glasgow talked to us about that, so we'll be looking for that screwball and seeing if it's effective here in this game. She comes from Mont Bellevue, Texas, which is an area that produces a lot of good pitchers. Randy Rupp from Texas State, Jessica Mullins from Texas State. I know I'm missing one or two more. Developing well down there. Got a new right fielder as well, Kramer Ushte out of Brenham, Texas. Time run on and the uh, go ahead at the plate, Savvy Pola. A strikeout and a pop up with Slugger Maya Brady on deck. UCLA left a runner at third base in the third. They left two on base in the fourth. Missed a couple of chances to bust it open. And now 0-2 to Pola. So important for both the players, both Pola and Brady, to be able to put that air behind them and separate their offensive at bat from the air that they made in the previous inning. It was a big one. Able to move on, move forward. She stays in the lineup as the DP. Vines will stay at second base. Mm -hmm. Good pitch, good eye. And uh, Pola, after not getting the sacrifice down, is going to go to a slap, so she'll have. Still opportunity to try to move the runner. That's really what your job is in this scenario. Trying to get that teammate up 60 feet if you are out. Obviously, best case scenario is hit back up the middle. Kept in the infield and no, safe at second base. The call is the throw pulled her foot off the base, but the naked eye, it appeared to stay on it. Michelle, you talked about how Savvy Pola was going to her slap, and there you see the shortstop, Sissy Vasquez, playing more up the middle of the field, and that hit to her, to her throwing side, and she threw from her backside, trying to see if the foot stayed on second base. Oh, it looked like the the toe did. That's such a close play at second base. Wow, what an athletic reach. Yeah, it looked like she was on it when she had originally caught it right there. Yeah. And then like, it comes off, but it can as long as it's on when she first. Yeah, all she's got to do is yeah. touch it. Exactly. Right? Here she's out. There. there I mean, she's, she's out. Yeah. She's big time out. Good job by Ling Lears to hold on to that throw. And it's going to be overturned. She's going to be called out. Kirk Walker is going to want to talk to the umpire. I do believe they got it right, though, the conversation yes. with the umpires. Big call with where UCLA is yeah. at in their order right now. Yeah, with Hart coming up. Yes. Two, three, four. It really was an outstanding defensive play by the middles for Louisiana, and, and yeah. Pola did a great job of getting it down. Yeah. You know, that's really what you want. You want to get down to that left side, but Vasquez is just so good. You know, playing slightly up the middle. Mm -hmm. Has to go back into that five, six hole. And so look how far up the middle she is. 
almost probably could have stayed on her feet a little bit longer. You know, important to try to move those feet, but she's a freshman and just a great job of making that play and presence of mind to know to come back to Lynn Lears. Great play. Yeah. It's a great play to come away with an out, I should say. Athletic play to get the throw off, to get the catch, to keep the foot on. And, and I commend the umpires for getting together to make sure they got the play right. I think they've just warned Kirk Walker, who is continuing to argue with the umpires. Well, it's fired up the fan bases. <laughs> <laughs> so with one on and one out, here comes Maya Brady, who's 0 for 2. Seven for 16 here in Clearwater over the five games. Well, and these are the RBI producers for UCLA. Maya Brady, Megan Grant, and Jordan Woolery. So Brady, a junior, and the two freshmen back behind her. But 15, 15, and 14 RBI leading the way, leading the team. Brady, that one was way out of the zone, and that'll get Kelly I out of the dugout. And Brady's last at bat, she did strike out on a rise ball up at her eyes. So I think right now she needs to just be looking low, looking something to drive. UCLA's gonna get a pinch runner at first base. Kelly Gooden will run. She is the tying run. I love that Leah Jordan comes out to talk to Brady. A little advice. And the seven-year super senior that they hope to have back in the lineup at some point this season, returning from injury. One and two. It's a good pitch by Landry after taking Brady upstairs above her eyes. She throws that rise a little bit lower. Brady sees the spin, lays off of it. Two and two. Falterman, er. two down. And that Landry goes after Brady. They're going to go to the outside corner. It's going to be off the plate. And we call the ball. Then they come right up at her eyes. They get the swing and miss. They come back with the rise again, a little lower for the called strike. Change up to set up another pitch on the outside corner that Brady gets under to rise ball. Because of that change up, she's not quite as aggressive. And a. Deep fly ball to Falterman out in left field to get Brady. So some big time pitching to get Brady out. That's a, that's a huge get for Sam Landry and the Raging Cajuns. Huge help. And now it's Megan Grant. Struck out in the first, walked in the fourth. Beautiful change up. Dropped it down to 47 miles an hour. This 
a swing and miss, 0-2. Right. Oh, that that drop ball? Yeah, and that changeup is such a good pitch. Again, sets up everything. And I love the way that you know Coach talked about how he kind of protected her last year, but she's matured so much. Big pressure situation for her here. We're showing her Angela Tincher videos, right? To yeah. Figure out the drop. 0-2 pitch. Got that changeup working, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. It's her best pitch. Back to first. Piska is doing a nice job back behind the plate. Keep that in front. She's been blocking some change-ups. It's a really good arm. One, two from Landry. Got up in the eyes. <laughs> nice pitch. Good job of getting rid of it. to hit right there. I don't think that Sam Landry wanted that one-two pitch that close to the strike zone. Megan Grant took a good swing on it. So much power for a freshman. The ball comes off of her bat so hard. Sam Landry gets the strikeout after a battle with the freshman Megan Grant. This Louisiana team is feeling emotion and they're feeling momentum right now, that's for sure. Game track brought to you by Evo Shields. UCLA down to Louisiana, three to two after that big three run inning in the bottom of the fourth for Louisiana. Charlize Palacios hit that home run back in the second, big bomb, but Louisiana answered big in the bottom of the fourth. A couple of opportunities for UCLA where they could have plated some more runs and didn't. We got ourselves a ball game. Yes, we do. So it's Falterman back in the nine spot and in the top. Sam Landry, the fourth pitcher of the day. Huge couple of outs there to close out the top of the fifth. Run scored with just one hit. That was the two out, two run double for Maddie Hayden. Benefiting from two UCLA infield errors. And that's one of the things we have seen at this tournament is how quickly things can turn around. You get two quick outs, you, know, you think you're cruising through the inning, and then you get a walk, you have an error, another error, a double, and all of a sudden, boom, there's a three spot, a crooked number put up on you. 
This would be huge for Louisiana. They've lost three in a row. They've got another top 10 opponent coming up next on this field in Florida State. And of course for UCLA, undefeated start to their season on the line. They're 11 and 0 coming in. for Falterman. So two hits for the first two to face Megan Faremo. Go figure. Well, it's interesting too because Falterman was pinch hit for last inning. Now the caught stealing ended up ending the inning. But Falterman, good job on that crossover to put that ball down. Trying to start something here in the fifth. Back to the top and Kotzelnik. Doubled back in the first. Six for 13 so far here in the tournament. Rise at the eyes. One on one. in time <laughs> and it just missed third base i don't know how it didn't hit off of her foot i yeah. thought it came so close to hitting her before she then fell onto the ground Just reading the spin right there See Megan Framo go to that off speed pitch, that change up very much so far. Only face, this is just the third hitter that she's faced, but a pitch that's looked so good for her. Louisiana team seems to be early timed up with her harder stuff. Side by Kotzelnik. A couple of pitches on that outside corner that she's watched. A couple of 3 2 counts now in the inning for Faremo. Runner was going. Foul. Well, in a situation like this, when you're taking off, as soon as the ball is hit, and you're going to see, she's just going to end up going. She's got to right there. She should be watching and knowing that this situation, you've got to make sure the ball gets out of the yard or gets down. As soon as it's caught, she's 
You can see she's out by a mile. And that is a great rundown by Lauren Carter out in right field. Man, what a swing. It was well wow. struck by Stormy. Well struck. Yeah, I thought that was had a, a chance to just get out of here. but So what looked like could have been big trouble for UCLA ends up being a big time double play for him. Well, that means nobody aboard for Carly Heath with two outs. Just about everything. <laughs> this last, uh, yeah, bottom four and or uh, top five, uh, now bottom five. Feels like it's taken an hour with all the changes and look at this. So three runs scored by Louisiana in the bottom of the fourth. A couple of errors, a couple of pinch hitters, five changes on defense, a couple of pitching changes. <laughs> A caught stealing, a fly out double play. <laughs> the three hitters that have come up against Faramo have hit her hard. Yep. Double, single, and almost an extra base hit or home run that was tracked down well by Carter, but struck well. That's the swing and miss there, two and two. Louisiana over UCLA as we head to the top of the sixth. First round of games of the day, all building towards the Sunday night showcase. Would it be, could it be? Make it happen. Catherine Sandercock and Montana Fouts might be the pitchers tonight. And they have been putting up numbers their entire careers. Five Eastern on ESPN. No, I was just on the Twitter machine, ladies, and um, we've been tweeting out, you know, promoting the game. Josie Muffley <laughs> said she will be watching tonight. <laughs> she may also be playing shortstop for Florida State, so I don't know if she'll be able to hear us, but I guess she'll go back and watch. That'll be a fun one. They, they, they always seem to be at their best in the Sunday night showcase. Oh, yeah. Florida State beat UCLA last year. It was a walk-off. Kaylee Harding. Big time games. Yeah. With the Crimson Tide. Well, they get a little warm up before the game tonight yeah. because they play Louisiana right after this. The Seminoles do. The way that Louisiana is showing up today, it's going to be a tough day of games for Florida State. It's tough to play two games in one day against yeah. a ranked opponent or a top mm -hmm. 10 team. Alabama, after they lost to UCLA, they bounced back for a couple of wins. Infield pop-up, one down. As Woolery is retired, a shout out to everybody manning the cameras and working in the production truck and all the men and women behind the scenes bringing you the action. 40 games in four days and most of them were working most of those. And they're just a, as excited to be on the road to the Women's College World Series as the fans are. We have such passionate people that have our backs. Love our team. Yeah. yeah. You know, they call us the talent on TV, which is appropriate. <laughs> but it's really, it's really all, all of those other folks that, that make it happen. They're all talent. Especially the men and women that speak in our ears. Mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> they told us to say that. <laughs> Actually, we're the um, 
I think we're the, we're the biggest team here. Yeah, we are. We did, right? What are we, almost 200 strong? I think so. All year long. We might not be the best softball players, but we're the biggest <laughs> team. We're definitely for sure. the oldest. <laughs> <laughs> We're all out of eligibility, I think, at this yeah. point. Um, sadly. Sadly. Here's Palacios, who hit the home run back in the second. And then hit into the double play in the fourth. I agree. Going right at these Bruins. Bruins uh, down to the last five outs. Landry came on in the last inning, has retired the first four she's faced. And it's the top of the order. Here's what Palacios did off of the starter, Carly Heath. That was a rise ball that got out in a hurry. I put her letters and she just took it long gone. Bashed it off the top of the pole, the power pole. In the top of the order for UCLA has been quiet. One through four have not gotten a hit. A walk and a hit by pitch, but that part of the order that's just usually so lethal with Brady and Grant and Woolray that's so hot this weekend, pretty quiet. And majority of their strikeouts have come one through four as well. Landry dealing right now, two down. Sam Landry is getting some big strikeouts here, Michelle. Moving the ball up in the zone. That backward rotation, a low rise there. We've seen UCLA have several of their strikeouts on this rise ball, and that was a pitch earlier in this tournament. It seemed like they were handling well up in the zone. There's Kennedy Powell, a ground out, and then a run scoring single. Wow, and it's interesting the way she holds that pitch. I, I saw you hitting your talk back, and I knew that you were going to talk <laughs> about her grip. I just knew it. I could feel it. Well, take a look at the way that she grips it. Right in here, she looks like it's going to be a changeup, right? So she puts it deep in the palm of the hand. Anytime you hold that ball deep in the palm of the hand, it takes away spin. But she also does that on her rise ball, and I could hear UCLA trying to call it from the dugout. She's palming it, but then she'll still come through and get underneath the pitch and throw it as a rise ball. So you can see the way it's deep in the palm of her hand. And so she blends those grips together. And when she does that, you think you have it picked from the side or from the dugout. Boom, and yeah. look at that's a rise ball. It looks like the change up grip. You can hear him calling it. And that's really what happened when Palacio struck out on that rise ball. She was thinking sit change, and it showed up as a rise ball. Powell. Pops it up and now the snow cone grab by Sissy Vasquez. Sissy Vasquez pulled in just a little bit but goes back onto the dirt. Look at the way she keeps that ball, the snow cone intact. Third out of the inning and we're loving it. Welcome back to the Tax Act Clearwater Invitational presented by Evo Shield. To the bottom of the sixth, Louisiana is three outs away from a win over UCLA. They have a one and three record here with two losses to ranked teams and two losses by one run. And this would be huge if they can get those last three outs. They'll take some swings first. Kramer Ushte. Three, four, and five due up to face for Ramo. Well, and Beth, you noticed too, just the level of competition that they've played their last four games here. Four top 10 teams that they're gonna face in a row. And a lot of them are teams that are on this list facing UCLA right now in Louisiana. Just got over 1,800 wins. And all of these teams that are the winningest programs in D1 at this tournament, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's a huge deal. Lots of national championships in history. The other four all have national titles. Louisiana looking to join that group.
Bottom of the order, by the way, would be due up for UCLA in the seventh. But they have not mustered much against Sam Landry. 0 for 6 since she came on in relief. Today, Louisiana and Florida State, and then the Sunday night showcase, Alabama and Florida State. That is on ESPN tonight at 5 Eastern. Oh, Knowles are already getting set. That's right. You know, if you see it the same way, though, Michelle, I feel like Louisiana has hit Paramo much harder than what they hit the starter, Taylor Tinsley, the freshman. That's the pitch. Gets the punch out. Curve first, one down. She's gonna go to this curve ball, just paint the inside corner and bring it inside to this left-handed hitter. That's a nice pitch, getting her to back away off the plate. But the hardest hits have come off of Ramo. Tinsley did a nice job, but they pulled her after those two errors. Just to change things up, several changes in that inning, back in the fourth. Yeah, I think ferremo has been working that outside corner a lot to the lefties. I think that curveball back inside, that's a nice call to move different sides of the plate, change eye level. And you can tell Louisiana is doing a good job of splitting the plate. They're trying to lay off of Ferremo's rise ball, take it away from her, but that last pitch, Ferremo brings that rise ball a little bit lower into the zone. Piscos hit by a pitch. She has since <laughs> wrapped that up. She chooses not to wear any protection on that arm, and it got her right near the elbow, her first at bat, and then grounded out in the fourth. One, two from Framo. really well over there at third. So he makes some great decisions on watching the rotation of the ball, letting balls go foul, getting some stuff hit hard in the 5-6 hole. High softball IQ. You can tell that she has it at a, at a young age. Here's Lang Lears. Alexa walked and scored in the fourth. Maggie Hayden, a two-run double. Over the center fielder, Janelle Mionio's head. In that three-run fourth inning after they trailed two zip. their last chance coming up as we head to the seventh. They're down a run. Tax Act Clearwater Invitational presented by EvoShield is brought to you by Tax Act. File for less and get more. St. Pete Clearwater, Florida. Let's shine. Plan your escape at visitstpeteclearwater.com. 
and Evo Shield, the source for custom fitting protective gear. Clearwater Beach and over to the Eddie Seymour Softball Complex. Final day of the Tax Act Clearwater Invitational presented by Evo Shield. And the final chance for UCLA, they're down a run. Bottom of the order and Anna Vines drops down the bunt, out at first. Defense doing the job behind Sam Lendry. How about the freshman Vic Valdez? We've talked about the hot spot over their third base has been very busy in this game. And look at the reaction, bare hands it and gets it down the line. A couple of bunts have gone down and been safe for UCLA, but I love the way that Valdez is gonna pick this up, rifle it down and get the out. Wow, that is a huge play. No wasted time. Wow. Alexis yeah. Ramirez will be the pinch hitter here in the eighth spot in the order. So much young talent on the left side of the infield for Louisiana, both the shortstop and third baseman are freshmen. Yeah, Sissy Vasquez has been terrific. Oh, for four as a pinch hitter in the tournament so far for Ramirez. Florida State looking on. They have Louisiana coming up. Ooh, they got shakes. Too low is in for a strike. Wow, when your 2 0 pitch is a change up like that, <laughs> you, you know it's good. You know that's a good pitch. <laughs> She's thrown well, and they have, it's like Shoreman warming up. They have been showing off the pitching staff. Landry is the fourth pitcher of the ball game and trying to lock this one down. Nail biting time. Oh, and it hits her. Tying run aboard. Go ahead at the plate. And that pitch right there may also open the door for the top of the order to come up. With Pola on deck, it's Janelle Mionio who has laid down a sacrifice and beat out a bunt for an infield hit. The Bruins, and are we about to get our fifth Raging Cajun pitcher of the ball game? Yep. <laughs> Megan Shorman. And well, this is all about just trying to have different looks. The third time that they've changed a pitcher after a walk or a hit by pitch, it's like there's been an immediate pull from Jerry Glasgow. Shorman is the senior from Hazelwood, Missouri, their top returnee. I believe this would be her fourth appearance of the weekend. She throws that backdoor curveball. It's an elite pitch when she's spinning it tight and. It's all about a rise ball, though. She has worked on a changeup this year, but she has a lot of power at the top of the zone. She's going to need to spin that pitch tight, get a jump in past these UCLA bats to try to get the save here. So Carter will re-enter to run at first base as the tying run here with one out. Our performance update prepared by Tax Act. Some stellar D for Louisiana, especially at short. Sissy Vasquez. Vasquez has shown off her athleticism here in this game, going back to the ball, throwing from her backside, and then also Valdez. 
the third baseman, two freshmen, Vasquez and Valdez, playing on the left-hand side, who have been so sharp and get to play with each other for a long time because they are just freshmen. They got to switch up their uh, cards with a new pitcher defensively as Kelly I talks to Mionio and Carter. Make sure they're all on the same page. We saw Langliers make a good play at second base earlier in this game, too. A really young infield. Lots of underclassmen for Louisiana. Janelle laying it down off the glove of Valdez over the first in time for the out. Two down. The tying run into scoring position. Oh, oh, oh. The energy by the Raging Cajuns right now. Vic Valdez. Wow. <laughs> wow. So this bunt goes down and Valdez almost overruns it, picks it up, guns it down. But look at the pick at first and the energy. Wow. Close play at first, but the pick. Because she was playing well up the line, yes. anticipating a bunt. And Mayonio read that and tried to push the bunt past her. Valdez reacted well to it, tried to get it past her. And it almost worked, but that pick at first base and overall the play to come away with an out there is absolutely critical in this game. Well, they say the ball always finds you, right? Does the bat always find you? Because here's the story for UCLA. Two errors in a three-run fourth inning. Savvy Pola was the second baseman. She was moved to DP after that. She was emotional in the dugout, trying to recover from that. And now, opportunity knocks with a chance to tie the game. Two outs, bottom seven. Against Megan Shorman. Yeah, it's been bananas this game has. pressure in this game has not gotten a hit yet. In fact, the top four in the lineup have not gotten a hit yet for UCLA. And she's able to bust through when it matters the most. Two outs, top of the seventh, runner in scoring position. Your team is counting on you to be the one that steps up and gets a hit. Put that air behind you and make the most of this AB, and she does. And now it's Brady. And a reminder that the runner that scored Got on after getting hit by a pitch. Three passes, they haunt you. Brady's 0 for 3. Well, two of the three runs for UCLA have gotten on by the hit by pitch. Come around to score. Yesterday, Maya Brady did this, her fifth of the season against Virginia Tech. 3-0 count, green light, low in the zone and just blasted out of the park. Chasing after that rise ball a bit today. What 
a way to start out the last day here in Clearwater. It's packed standing room only. The Florida State fans have arrived for the next game. Brady, base hit. Heading for third and on the overthrow. UCLA will go for the lead. The throw to the plate, not in time. And Paula puts the Bruins up. Like the way my Brady has been hitting this year, you knew it was just a matter of time for her to bust out on a pitch. She totally drives this change up down the right field line. Look at the way she just waits on it, gets it right down that line. And then the throw is well elevated. And this is, I mean, no hesitation <laughs> by Savvy Pola coming in, going to the back of the plate. You see the tag come in, but a really good slide. And the energy of this UCLA team coming back here in the top of the seventh when they were down by a run. RBI single and then E9. So this time it's the miscue on the other side after the big Brady hit on the throwing error into third base. A two run rally in the seventh to take the lead. Doing it with two outs. Grant. 0 for 2 with a couple of strikeouts and a walk today. Hindsight's, you know, 2020, you guys, but they had not hit Sam Landry. And yeah. Gary Glasgow decided to take her out and put in Shorman. He's made a lot of pitching moves in this game, but. Now that's your Monday morning quarterbacking right there. Yeah. Right? They, <laughs> yeah. they had not gotten a hit off of Landry over two plus innings. I like Landry in there because of her changeup. Yes. That was the difference yep. maker. Her changeup is better than Shorman, so that I personally would have stayed with Landry because, as you mentioned, Amanda, she wasn't hit. Now, granted, the hit by pitch was the changeup, but she had been in control up until that point. Mm -hmm. And now back-to-back -back singles off of Shorman by Pola and Brady. So defeating too. Louisiana just really felt like they were in the driver's seat with those defensive plays that they were making and the fact that they had shut down UCLA's offense from scoring with Landry in the circle. UCLA just showing some fight. And like you said, Beth, it started with that hit by pitch. Straight three, side retired. Down a run, down to their final out. No problem for the winningest program in history. The Bruins making the comeback. Pola and Brady getting it done. And now it's Louisiana's turn to try and add to the drama. Savvy Pola, the face of, it's not how hard you fall, it's how well you get back up. The throwing air, the tears in the dugout, and then the bat in her hand with a chance to make a difference. Bang. Ties it up with that base hit, and then would ultimately come around to score the go-ahead run, hugging it out with the goat. And now she will watch and see if Megan Faramo and her teammates can close it out. Or will it be a monster moment for Louisiana and a chance to walk it off? Their two freshmen, Valdez and Vasquez, will lead the charge here. Bottom of the order coming up. 
Rachel Sid will come on defensively at third base for UCLA. And now it's in the hands of Megan Faremo. First pitch swinging. Fly ball to Lauren Carter, one down. I know it's just February, but you can see so clearly with the emotions that Savvy Polo went through in this game, how much each of these games mean this weekend and within a year for these teams. And out the shortstop, Cecilia Vasquez. Kelly, I coming out to see if I think Anna Vines wanted some sunglasses. I think is what she asked. Well, that was a good job actually by Lauren Carter coming in to make that because it looked yeah. like Vines was going to go back and was having a hard time tracking that ball. Good communication by Carter to come in and make that last catch. She waves off the shades. One down for Vasquez. That curveball has been working for Megan Framo. She was able to settle in in that last inning, had a strikeout with her curveball, a strikeout with her rise, able to paint that outside corner against these righties. combination ability for a pitcher to compartmentalize right you've you've just been jumping out of your uniform with your teammates for the last 10 minutes and now okay refocus job at hand out there in the circle does uh, say, okay, I'll, I'll take the shades. Got them on. Oh, there'll be a lot of eight clapping on the way back to Westwood if they can lock this one down with a seventh inning comeback, one out away. Maddie Hayden, who hit the two-run double off of Framo in the fourth. Fight from Hayden. There he is, taking some close pitches. And she's looking for that rise ball. She's got that split grip. Trying to barrel it up. Strucker out with the change. Ball game. And a comeback win for UCLA in the 
seventh inning. I think in this game, you saw this UCLA team come together to overcome adversity. They were down, but show how tight-knit this team is. Yeah, these are the type of games that pay dividends early on in the season for later. And Megan Faramo coming in wasn't as warm and sharp at first, but really settles in the last two innings, retiring the Cajuns in order. That changeup, knee buckling, gets Hayden to watch, and you can just see the emotion for this UCLA team. Redemption for Savvy Pola and Maya Brady. Two clutch hits after the early errors. And the seventh win of the season for Megan Framo, the 79th of her career. More softball to come on the ESPN Networks. Check your local listings.